All right, welcome back to 21 Soul here at the Rope It Up Room in East Philadelphia. And today we have special guests yet again. I'm here with the band, the artists, collectively known as Groot. G-R-U-T with an umlaut. Pronounce it right. So <laughs> right. these cats are from Atlanta, Georgia, and they came to us through uh, connections in the Atlanta scene. And we're really happy to have them. Um, love to say hello and welcome. Hey everybody, thank you. Uh, let's start on the left. I'd like everybody to introduce themselves. Tell me oh, uh, who you are. Avis Burroughs. And you play? Saxophone. Awesome. I'm Daniel Waitanis. I play trombone and keys. My name is Morgan Guerin. I play drums in this group. Uh, my name is Brandon Boone. I play bass. I'm Patrick Arthur. I play guitar. All right, there's the lineup. So there's a different kind of thing happening here. I'm really happy you guys are here, but um, I want to let people know who are watching that uh, Rope It Up has been growing. So you guys already have a record out. just came out uh, 10 days ago. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the title? Here it is. It's right here. Yeah. Side Room Placing. Stories. Side Room Stories. All right, and uh, we're going to be... Uh, talking with you and working with you over the next year uh, as you get ready for uh, the next record. So I'm going to start with the name. Where does it come from? Groot. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Um, I, think it, I think it might have been Morgan. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, it was just mainly a conversation about, you know, what sounds good, like, on the tongue, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, what people would have fun, like, saying... Yeah. And you know, <laughs> it is fun to say. It's really it's fun, fun to say. Yeah, I think it was like a Facebook Messenger like chat we had yeah, in deep thread. We were like going through all these names, and it was like Groot came up with you know like the character. We were like, it sounds like the character from Guardians, Guardians of the, the Galaxy. Galaxy. Yeah. So and I'm anyway. I'm out of the loop. I'm old. So, <laughs> this is, so it, it, it it's does. a tree man. Yeah, yeah it's a tree man. Tree man. Yeah, it's yeah. a tree man. We are the tree man. Love. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and Guardians of the Galaxy is a great movie. A great movie. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, I think I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pop culture illiterate. Yeah. So um, it, the first thing I thought of was Wolfpack. Mm. When I think of Groot, you know, and, they, and I think their their social media handle is Wolf, mm -hmm. right? Or they're, they're, you know, so I think I think people... It's a great band. Yeah. find it easy to say. Yeah, and, and great at connecting with people, and I think part right. of it is it's a, it's a cool name to say. Mm -hmm. right? sure. So how did you guys all connect in the first place? Like... Um, I think, uh, Danny and Morgan. Yeah, we've, lived in we've gone city. back through just school and playing together from a young age. Since middle school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah and Patrick and I went to middle school and high school together and college. Gotcha. Yeah. All, all in Atlanta? <laughs> yeah. Well, in Augusta. In, in Augusta. Augusta. In college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Putting up gotcha. with each other for that long. Yeah, the band kind of formed when, uh, Brandon and I were doing a, like a weekly jam session opening up, like as a house band. We call different musicians every week. And we nice. kind of stumbled into this band one day, mm -hmm. and got home. We were like, "Man, that felt really good. We should do that again." And nice. We just kept doing that, and then yeah, it became a band. And keep it organic. Definitely. Mm -hmm. and, and how how Avis? How did you? Oh, um, <laughs> well, like I, I met them everybody through the scene, but um, like one day they just asked me to sub for them, like sub in, and I did that a couple more times, and then one day they were like. So you're part of the band. It just felt right. Yeah. So and he had to do spoken word on the record. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and add another interview too, right? We were doing an interview and it was like, I'm not really sure if I'm in this band or not. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah, you are. He's like, oh cool. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So that's 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 now he's here. These are really key stories. I mean, I we try to put things in context that, and people want to know how these things evolve. I mean, Snarky Puppy is probably one of the biggest stories here, but. We were just talking to R.C. Williams the other night about how that all evolves. Just, you know, he was doing a jam session down in uh, Deep Ellum. And, you know, they went out to UNT and met some of the music students. And they were like, why don't you come down to our jam session, you know? Right. And then Michael League and Mark Letiri and all those guys went down. And then the next thing you know, there's a band. Right. Yeah. You know, so yeah. these, these are important moments. And that's, that's kind of what the vision behind this album is, to a certain extent, is a collection of these stories the side room stories, which is where we recorded the album, mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, side room of his home, yeah, my and house. all these like track titles like Gas Stub. It was written in Sharpie on the wall where we were recording, yeah. and we were just like oh, just a random thing. Yeah, yeah. it was written on the wall. I so have like, this, uh... That's a song title. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just like, so full. I guess this is just like a collection of uh, songs because we write music as a as a collective. 
So like, uh, like Wildfire on the record is a song when because, I mean, we played in this venue in uh, <laughs> West Virginia. I think it was called Wildfire. Wildfire. And that's Virginia. actually yeah. That's actually when we you really brave. decided to write the song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so all just going in. I'm just no, saying. I mean it, it was it was it was a, it was an experience. I mean, so we just wrote about kind of the experience and. Nice. Mm. We came up with that somehow. <laughs> so it's kind of hap- happening in real time. Yeah. Of course. So so how so explain that writing process. So I mean, is there one, is there one or two of you who who get together and start with like you know I have an idea and a structure and then it's always different. Is it? Always it's always different. different. Sometimes it's it just comes from getting together and just playing with mm-hmm. no no premeditation. And then sometimes it's like somebody will bring an idea. And then that'll spark something from another band member, and then they'll give input, and it's always kind of changing and always okay. staying different. So maybe we can go around and, and talk about influences, so that people can get a sense of you know where what you're drawing from. Sure. Uh, when when you do go in and, and start a writing process, you wanna we'll go around the room again. <laughs> um, top band. Top band. Oh, man. Mm. Or artist. I don't even think I have a top band. Um, or what, what hit you? What hit you that, that drives you musically? Whoa, that's also a really heavy question. <laughs> <laughs> You're just just, I'm just, just winging it, man. Just <laughs> it right uh, I don't know. Like, there's there's a lot of different things. Um, I'm just gonna say something really general because I don't know how to answer those other questions completely. Um, <laughs> like, one of the things that I admired about this band was just it's literally influenced by everything. I think. Everybody here, especially those guys, like, I've been, like, learning a lot just by hanging out with them, but they listen to so much different music. Like, I don't think anybody has necessarily a top, like, all, you know, because mm-hmm. we, we get something different from each, like, thing we listen to. Mm-hmm. This band is literally every genre. It feels like that when you when you watch it, so you, like, you're listening to it, and you're just like, wow, this is so much, it's just good music. Like, it turns into being just good music, and... um yeah. yeah, so good music is what influences me, <laughs> I guess, like, uh-huh. just good sure. music. Right on. Nice. Anybody else want to dive into that one? Yeah, I think this trip, we, we actually had this conversation recently, but this trip is kind of special because we've all been in the van together for such a long time that we're all listening to the same stuff, ah. and it's kind of cool for, like, one point of time to really be on the same page musically because we're all... Um, gathering from these same sources but for me personally there's been a couple albums that have come out recently that i've really been into um one of them is that new mgmt record Mm -hmm. um little dark age really cool unique retro kind of sound um and then another artist that i've been big into is nick hakim Hmm. um he's got a cool record called green twins that i've been listening to a lot in the van, we've been yeah. playing those two pretty heavily. <laughs> no, that's an interesting yeah. concept. I didn't think about that. So, like, now you got five guys, and then yeah. now, now you're in the same band. So, right. mm-hmm. you got to like process the same, mm-hmm. yeah, and that's got to influence you, that's right? True. We play that's differently true. when we're all kind of thinking alike. Or, you take yeah. turns, like yeah, passing the ox. Cool. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah, um, uh, I'm a huge fan of Esperanza Spalding mm. and Nate Wood. I love Nate Wood a lot. Oh yeah. Because he inspires me as a multi instrumentalist myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Nicholas Payton. Mm-hmm. Uh, Some familiar names there. Of yeah. course, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, shoot, <laughs> a couple of names. Deerhoof, man. Deerhoof, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't I'm, know the I'm list. Out of that loop. The list goes to, on. I, I love to. Jocko. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. List. Um, Brent. And I would say, I guess, kind of the last few weeks. I've just been really digging uh, into Big Yuki. Wow. Uh, yeah. And uh, I've been checking out a lot of DJ Harrison out of Richmond, Virginia. Devon Harris, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah he he has some, like, he has a list of just albums. And, Nate like, Smith albums. tweeted, tweeted, tweeted the G well. word yeah. uh, about Devon Harris <laughs> yesterday. Did you see that? No. Yeah. Oh, so well. the young genius from... Uh, <laughs> From RVA. It was his birthday. Right? That comes from Nate Smith. Wow. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah. Carries some weight. Yeah. Devon's great. Yeah. My, I think my biggest influences compositionally probably come from Pat Metheny and Christian Scott, those two guys. I really like the way they write. Nice. And then one of my favorite records that has always been on rotation since I've heard it is this Aramage record, Jameer Williams. Mm. J- 
Jim Meyer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Meyer, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like a, I just kind of stumbled into it. I couldn't even find it online. It was on his website. Is it, an, is it, is it early on? Because I think Chris Turner, yeah, Chris mm-hmm. Turner was in that. Matt was Stevens, was in that? Band. Yeah, Stevens, Matt Stevens as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. right, right. It's a really special record for me. It's like that kind of changed the way I listen to music too. Though. I got to go back and listen. I met I met him down in L.A. at uh, the Blue Whale. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what was happening. I think um, ah, so it was it, oh it was a um, who's the cat that Mark DeClavello plays with. Uh, he does he does the full on uh, Dilla stuff with the orchestra. Oh, Miguel, uh, Miguel, Miguel yeah, with Ferguson's yeah. show, right? So I was flying into LA and it was like, <laughs> yeah. LA, what's happening? You know, and right. it's like, oh, go here, and then everybody <laughs> wow. was there. Spot yeah. was out there, and Mark was everybody was hanging out. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, that's the spot. Mm-hmm. He's got some ties to Atlanta too. <laughs> yeah. Miguel, yeah, yeah. Does he? Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. Really strong. Nice. Kevy, who plays on the here. record, has a music festival in town called Music in the Park. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Miguel came out. And a lot of us were a part of like a, a grand final concert that was beautiful. With Miguel, and Kevy's cool. like the greatest dude. Oh man, without Kevy Williams, he, right. he, he needs he needs more recognition. Yeah, yeah. Um, there'll be some surprises uh, coming up here on Rope It Up. Uh, oh the future shoot! Surrounding yeah. Kevy, but I didn't say that on camera. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, you know, I think that people, you know, just just hearing what you guys all said just now, it gives people a sense of like where 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 you where you're starting with mm-hmm. the music and what the record will be about. But I think it also leaves the leaves it wide open that you have to go in and listen, yeah, right, to yeah, to, really to get more info. Mm-hmm. Um. So you guys are on the road now. Um, going to Asheville. Charlotte, how does yep. the live show and the recording studio differ, if at all? We try to bring the live show to the recording studio. That's <laughs> like <laughs> the, the constant struggle. Yeah. I think but, like the biggest thing about like the live show and this band is just like you can tell like we have the like what I call Atlanta grit. Like Atlanta has like the underground instrumental scene has this like grit has this like little dirty to it Mm -hmm. it's just a little bit intense like Mm -hmm. but at the same time like there's like a beauty behind it but like it really like goes in it's just like a certain vibe that i think that we've all gotten from playing around you know cats in atlanta like playing around kevy uh or even uh kevin yeah yeah um kevin scott kevin scott Scott. Scott. yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um it's just like it's a certain vibe that you get when you come see our live shows. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I think it's different for us every night as well. Because, I mean, one person could feel, you know, a certain thing uh, in a certain moment that could alter the way that we play the song. Yeah. So it, it could be, like, it could be anything. Like, it could be, like, a person in the audience makes us, like, feel some way. Or the room, like, could make us, make us play quieter or make us feel like we need to play louder or whatever it could be like yesterday we kind of played into um like a really small small venue like the the uh, there were a couple chairs and everyone was pretty close to us so we kind of mm-hmm. we kind of had to play like you know pretty pretty quiet but I felt like that was one of the best shows we've done because mm-hmm. we just played to the room and that interactive experience right yeah. and the energy and the it, energy is is the room yeah, yeah. keeping that intensity <laughs> but like in a different medium right. like a more relaxed yes. intensity <laughs> yes i mean just so for that's that doing it the hard way right i yeah. mean like you you really are uh you know you're you're that's there's improvising then yeah, there's yeah. improvising yeah. to the to to the whole thing right yeah, yeah. um that into your surroundings yeah. yeah, I mean, you don't just play to a thousand people and play louder. Yeah. You're, 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 you're assessing the energy. Yeah. Fascinating. I want to evoke the spirit of the late, great Colonel Bruce Hampton in, in the mix of this because um, uh, I, I knew your name before I knew you <laughs> because you were shouted out on uh, the Colonel Bruce <laughs> song. There was a time... <laughs> Uh, in Augusta, I can't GA. escape him. <laughs> no one, no one can or will ever escape. Uh, I want to point out again on camera, uh, as I had before, that uh, Colonel Bruce gave me permission, like he gave so many people permission to trust themselves and do what they want. And it was at a critical time in the history of Rope Dope where I wasn't really qualified for the job. And... Uh, he told me uh, 
in, in, in nonsensical ways uh, mm -hmm. that I was qualified for the job and to just, to just do it. So um, I wanted to know how you connected with him and has anybody else connected and, mm -hmm. like, and, and has that influenced you? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge influence. And actually, I got connected to Bruce through Brandon, who played way before I'd met Bruce. Um, he started playing bass with him probably two years before. Yeah, I think I think he'd heard this band, and I was just sitting in the band. He was like, "Who's your trombone player in gr group? How do you say your band name? <laughs> God, you need to change your band name. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> awful. But tell your tell your trombone player to show up to our next gig in Athens. And sure enough, Danny came through, wow. and <laughs> Bruce loved him. And ever ever since then, he was just like, just like God. Bring the trombone player. <laughs> <laughs> he sounded just like it. That's great. That's great. All right. So um, I, I want to know what you know. What what are the next steps? Like where you, you know you guys will be playing around Atlanta after tour. Are you going out on the road again? Like what what are the the goals and hopes and dreams? Um, I'm, we're in the process of writing a bunch of music right now. Um, We've been writing a bunch Bluetooth of music. Bluetooth speakers in the band and iPads in the van. IPad. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's been nice. going down. It's been yeah. Van room <laughs> stories. Yeah. Van yeah. um, <laughs> <Van and, laughs> Just more traveling. Uh, we've been pretty much going going up north and following the East Coast a lot. So I'm trying to head out west and towards mm -hmm. like New Orleans and California and stuff like that. That's on Dallas. the radar. Yeah, you Dallas. need to get to Dallas. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, I think they'd be excited about that down in Dallas. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. But yeah, this this has been fun. Uh, this this tour, cool. Uh, great great venues. Mm -hmm. Everyone's received it really well. I'd love the positive yeah. attitude. Yeah, it's so hard. Uh, what what you guys do, and I always want to stress this to an audience who might be watching, just like being out on the road all the time, pushing under seemingly insurmountable, you know, uh, against seemingly insurmountable odds, and just. Mm -hmm. Just keep doing it. That'll be my final question. Wonderful. What? Why do you play music? Man, it's heavy, cool. and it'll take it's us. Close. That'll give us plenty of time, <laughs> and I get to relax for a minute. Uh, this is a one at a time. Yep, we're gonna go around. I'll tell you what. We'll get. We'll start over here okay. this time. So, so I'm not. Yeah, just, I've kind of thinking about that a lot lately. Um, I feel like for me. Playing music is kind of the deepest level of honesty you can have with yourself, especially in, in this band, um, because we really rely on each other a lot. The, the, the songs change every night we play them based on, you know, whatever somebody's feeling that night. And kind of like what Danny was saying, when we listen to music in the van, I felt the songs shift just based on the influences of the, the songs we listened to that day. Like, mm -hmm. I can hear that in, like, what Morgan might play or what Brandon might play or whatever. Um... And so being able to communicate that in a very just organic and honest way is kind of what's kept me with music. Because I did a lot of stuff as a kid, and I was like, I'm going to be a soccer player. I'm going to, you know, go be a chemist or something. But none of that felt organic to me. But when I started doing music, I really felt that level of, like, I'm being really true to myself. Doing Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, I guess, piggyback off of that, like, if you're, if you're true to, like, the way that you play or just the music that you're playing, I think, like, for me... It's being able to see, like, how the audience, like, reacts to it or, like, because it's not just about, like, us playing. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's, like, bigger than that. I think it's, like, like, the audience, it could be, like, two people who maybe come up to us and just are, like, oh, this was, like, this was amazing. Like, this was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's, like, all right, well, we did our job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, besides just, like, setting up, driving four right. hours to play mm -hmm. a gig and, I feel like at the end of the night, you're like, okay, this mm -hmm. is why Beautiful. I did that. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, you know, I personally grew up in New Orleans, and I grew up into a musical family. My father plays bass, and my grandmother taught my father how to play bass. My mom plays piano. Um, I think it was just bound to happen. Yeah, so you never thought of any of anything else. Right, oh, second nature. Just, that's it. Yeah, I, I kind of wasn't interested in anything else. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I feel like having music as, you know, a universal language that everybody can understand, no matter what language they speak or read or whatever, mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's very important for us to, you know, 
relate to them and have them relate to us and us, you know, feed off each other's vibrations and our energy when we when we play music for audiences or when we play music um, as a group together, I feel like, you know, it's really, it's it's almost second nature. It's like a second voice. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, it could be your voice, you know, just depending on how you personally feel when you're playing. Mm-hmm. Um, sort I feel of like a conduit? Yeah, I feel like there's, another, there's no other <laughs> way I can uh, explain myself without music being involved. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I feel like, like what he was saying with the non-musical aspects of, of what comes with music, like the community of it, um, the family, like I come from a musical family as well, so like just bringing people together and bringing joy and, and, and all of that, all these non-musical things that translate 100% into the actual music that we're playing. Like that sense of community and the sense of comfort and invitingness is like is addicting <laughs> it's like <laughs> it, it shows in the music when it's when it's honest and when it's you know for yeah, for the nice. music and of course. Like, then everything is just bliss <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm like mad nervous right now because I'm trying to figure out what to say <laughs> I was thinking I was going to give you some time but then I'm like no that's worse and I realized as soon as it came right here I'm like now everything that's going to be said, he's going to have to take it out. <laughs> Let's sit back and... But I, just rephrasing the question in as direct as you can, like, why do you play music? Uh, um, I'm sure there are several reasons, uh, some that I could sum up and some I can't. Um, man, I'm just going to pick one right now. So, like, one of the things is, like, there's... I'll call it, it's like a mild chasing the dragon kind of experience. Like there's like, there's a moments um, when I play, especially with people like these guys, especially where you're playing something. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that's like really intense, but it's, it can even be like super soft or whatever, but it creates an experience. Mm -hmm. Um, The, my favorite type of music is music that like surrounds you. It really covers you completely. Like, you know, you get absorbed into it. Um, so, like, I play to kind of somehow create that moment mm-hmm. and be involved in that moment and be part of the creation of that moment and be part of what's manipulating kind of the energies, quote unquote, that like that surround us when when you're playing to that to that degree or that level or whatever. Wow. Um, wow. I guess I'm always chasing that. Wow. Uh, and so that's kind of why I mm-hmm. play. You're creating a moment. I'm trying to. In, the, in, the, <laughs> in vibration in the, in the, in the thing. Wow. Well, I, I, don't, I don't even want to talk after you guys just said all that, but I'll just say thank you for, uh, for being here. Thank you for making great music, and uh, we're going to be uh, working together, and I look forward to it. Cheers. Thank you for having us. All right.